Imagine a game of Jeopardy based around answers and questions on public policy. Oh, the nerdy possibility of this imaginary game show. All right. <clears throat> Federal regulations for 200, please. The answer is the Cuyahoga River. Beep, beep. Correct question. What is the easiest explanation for why it is a good idea to have a Clean Water Act to protect our water? On June 22nd, 1969, there was so much oil and pollution in Ohio's Cuyahoga River that it caught fire. And it wasn't the first time. Imaginary Alex Trebek is so disappointed in House Republicans right now. I will explain in just a moment. This is an oxymoron. Look, this is a river that is on fire. A river, which is a body of water, having to be sprayed down with other water in order to put it out. This is the Cuyahoga River just outside Cleveland, Ohio, burning out of control in June 1969. The fire caused tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage because the flames were high enough and hot enough to damage some of the railroad bridges that spanned that river. This is not hell, and the Cuyahoga River is not the river Styx, but you would be forgiven for thinking so. When the river caught fire in 1969, it was not the first time it had done so. It had caught fire in 1952 as well. That was a big one, million and a half dollars of damage that time. Before it caught fire in 1952, the same river also caught fire in 1948, also in 1941, also in 1936, also in 1922, also in 1912, and three times in the 1880s. Uh, by the time of the 1969 fire of the Cuyahoga River and the river burning through those railroad bridges, Time Magazine described 25 million gallons of raw sewage spurting daily into the Cuyahoga River from busted pipes. They wrote, some river, chocolate brown, oily, bubbling with subsurface gases, it oozes rather than flows. A water pollution report at the time said the Cuyahoga contained, quote, no visible life, not even low forms such as leeches and sludge worms that usually thrive on wastes. Yum. By 1969, a national revulsion over toxic slime that used to be a river burning its way through Cleveland and the mighty Hudson River in New York having bacteria levels 170 times what was considered safe. Headlines and scenes like that by 1969 helped catalyze support for doing something about it. And in 1972, Congress passed the Clean Water Act. That commie pinko President Richard Nixon supported the act but did not want to pay for it, so he vetoed it. Congress overrode the veto, and now our rivers don't catch fire anymore. Yay. This week in Washington, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives voted to go back to the old way that we used to deal with it. Every Republican in the House and a handful of Democrats from coal producing states voted yesterday for a bill to get the federal government out of water pollution control and to let that area of policy go back to the states like it used to be, like it was back in the good old days.